Hello everyone and welcome to Resident Arcade episode 78. My name's Chris and as always I'm joined by my co-host Matt and Danny. We're all suffering a bit from post LAN bru bl bl blues. Bruise, yeah, all the bruises. All the bruises. Post, <laughs> LAN, post LAN bruises. I think Matt probably is suffering from a few bruises judging by the uh, skateboard incidents. I don't, you, don't, you probably didn't fall off actually, I wasn't watching. No, I never fell off. You see, I've got many years of playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater under my belt. <laughs> so, so that makes you good in real life. Because, I mean, we all know that, you know, playing GTA makes you a brilliant driver. Exactly. Know, yeah. And an incredible car thief. So, yes, we all <laughs> attended LAN Ops at the weekend. So we've all met each other. I think Danny and Matt had met each other previously, but I have now met these two. Um, yeah. Last time I went to LAN Ops was about three years ago, which is when I did the last... Uh, one of the shows, uh, one of the, the last shows that we did, the last incarnation of Resident Arcade. So yeah, now met everybody. We all hate each other just that little bit more. Just that <laughs> no, little bit more. The thing is, we, made. we were all within like swinging distance all weekend, so it was a steady truce we had. <laughs> we were, but I still managed to not play any games with you at all, Matt, whatsoever. I, I, I don't, know it's a plan. <laughs> we, we didn't log on to a single server together. I would have come into Mordor, but we'll talk about that in a little bit later on. <laughs> we'll um, and, and Danny managed to play... Less Some. games than he normally would. Not really. More games. <laughs> just, just. But just. you still only got one game on the list, or two games on the list. <laughs> two games. Jesus on the Christ. List. I know. Anyway, so Danny, come on. What's <laughs> what's what's coming up in that in our flashback section? So wait, what flashback section? Um, we're looking at. Um, Wait, hang on. What's going on here? The script's not even written. It doesn't matter. We have, I haven't even read a single line of the script apart from the first bit. Do you? Just but, just roll with it, Danny. Just roll with I it. I know, but like, what are we looking at? <laughs> have you done your vocal warm-ups? <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. So we, we, do, we do expect to run over. I'll take over, Danny. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we do expect to run over a little bit in this show because um, we have been to the Lampire. We have done a lot. Well, I've played literally a ton of games. Um and we've got quite a lot of news as well this uh, this week. And I think I've just done Matt's bit as well, just for a laugh. Pretty much. <laughs> so, Chris... I, I welcome guess to the Chris it's... show. Yeah, well, welcome to the Chris show. <laughs> I'm Chris, this is Chris, and... And hello, I, I'm Chris. <laughs> and our usual host, Chris, is not here today. He's being replaced with Chris. Oh. <laughs> No. Anyway, right. So we're supposed to be better move on then. We better move on to the competition, which is a bit that I do again. In fact, Matt, do you want to do it? So you've not said anything. Do you want to do the competition real? Wow, you, you're letting me letting me lose. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now then, dear listeners, it's time for our competition. For the benefit of any new listeners, here are the rules. Each week, one of the hosts has two minutes to sell a game they've played, but no one else has. The others can ask up to three, one, two, three questions and award points based on whether they would buy the game at A, its current price, which is one point, or two... I went a bit off script there. It's lowest historical price, which awards half a point, or sometimes we may decimalise the points if someone's <laughs> done a shit job. Like that, basically, Danny. Yeah. Once again, get ready for another decimal system coming in, boys. <laughs> coming in hot. The, the Dens decimal system is in full play this week. <laughs> Uh, there are also bonus points to be had if anyone buys the game or adds it to their wish list before the end of the season, which is coming up soon. So it's still all to play for, boys. You did a so better Dan job of that than I do every week, actually. I ad lib that every week, and either I've written a brilliant script or you you just better at it, better at reading I'm, it out. I'm reading it, and you haven't. It's it's <laughs> this is something natural. It's called talent, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm, I'm going to flip it around this time. So Danny. What are you selling? What are you oh, buying? Um, Thank you. Hey, he gets well, it in. Give myself a little pat on the back there. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this week. Hang on. Um, let me get the timer up. Let me get the oh, timer oh, up. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Right. I'm ready to go. Let's go. One, two, three, go. Okay. Right. Okay. So I am selling this week a game called World War Three, which I have checked previously and neither of you have played. The game is developed by uh, The Farm 51 and it is basically an online only multiplayer hardcore shooter game. Um, basically, keep it as a, a more hardcore battlefield. Um, satisfying hardcore gunplay, uh, realistic sounding and feeling guns. And uh, by that, it's sort of like when you when you do fire them, they're, they're all very distinct different um you know rather than the sometimes you get a bit of a g generic thing going on with a lot of guns in a game uh with world war three they are quite distinct and, and really fun to shoot especially when you get a kill with them it does feel like punchy and like it does a lot of damage um the so it's obviously 
I've mentioned the sort of hardcore battlefield side of things, but it sort of adds another layer with the whole peaking system, a bit like Rainbow Six Siege in there. So although you are just like random guys running around the map, you do get the ability to sort of peak left and right and just poke your way around the 60 corner seconds. if you want to. The game is basically domination-based only. Uh, think of it as like a smaller scale planet side, but not persistent. So there's not like an instance where you're constantly hopping in. It's sort of like four regions that whoever based on whoever wins that particular match in that region it adds points towards like different regions and whoever's winning on that kind of takes lead and it's like got a bit of a map to show you who's who's leading there's four regions so there's berlin warsaw smolensk, smolensk and moscow I have trouble saying that uh, the game is still in seconds. development it's early access so let's blast this 30 seconds out mix of vehicles and infantry warfare maps are large enough i mentioned battlefield we all know what that is maps large 64 players max on a map very in-depth customization of player model and the guns. Think of like, I don't know if you've played Tarkov, but think of Tarkov uh, level of gun customization, but a little bit more streamlined. Nothing sort of paywalled or experience wall to you. As soon as you get the game, Five, you can just go four, do what you want. Three, two. And that's one. it. Ugh. All right. Good effort. Not bad. Considering that was last second. Yeah. Because Danny's, Danny's basically screwing this competition now. That's it. That's all the games that he's ever played ever. Yeah, that is the last game on my Steam library. <laughs> the last game on my Steam library I haven't talked about that I call. How many episodes have we done, Chris? Oh, about <laughs> two. Partake, two yeah, or about three. Two where I've taken partaken in the competition. So I've got about three games in my Steam library. It's um, more, of, more of a Steam pamphlet, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a... <laughs> this is this, just this... <laughs> It's like a Steam gift card. It's just the the few the few games at the top of the Steam gift card you get to have a small taste of. That's my library. Steam bookend. Yeah. Right. So, so Matt, you got any questions? questions? Um. So, I I didn't know what the game was until you mentioned it was like Battlefield, and it clicks into place. I have seen this before. Um. Yeah. So, could you talk me through the customization? Is it just for guns, or is it for? Do you have like different loadouts, like you do with? Say, so, yeah, I missed this bit out because I ran out of time. But yes, um, the, there's no classes in the game. You play what uh, effectively are roles, so you can tune a load. You don't actually get like some games do it, where like if you're a support, a support, a support specialist, you might get like um extra like accuracy with an lmg or something like that it's not like that at all it's completely flat across the bit like, across the board you just pick up whatever guns and whatever loadouts you want within within reason as in you have a weight limit you can't carry like two lmgs with you you can probably carry an lmg and a pistol or maybe a smg and a sniper kind of thing for those like long range short range battles and there's literally no bonuses to being in a like a, a certain class it's just how you want to play the game basically you pick what weapons you think are going to deal with a particular scenario better than what you might have tried before if you've died or something so it's kind of like just swapping out your loadouts all the time and trying to tweak them so that they're right for most scenarios okay right. you said it's an early access yeah um kind of two related questions yeah go ahead um has it been abandoned for one no nope. and two how far has it been developed is it in a is it in a, a good state a good enough state for me to like pick up and download and play and enjoy and, and... yeah so yeah it has not been abandoned they keep their current well they've recently pushed a patch today actually um for the game and the development the gameplay is polished like there's no missing textures and stuff like that. There's no glaringly obvious bugs or anything like that. They they are basically at this point trying to... Well, they started out with three maps when it first released. They've been working on a fourth... I say map a region. They'd worked on the fourth one and that's now released as well. So now you've got the four regions to play across, which expanded the game a little bit. Um, but yeah, it is polished enough by far to you know pick up and play now, definitely. I would keep it on par with a battlefield game there's nothing i have not found playing it for a, however many odd hours and it's more than two it's like i've played it for like 24 hours oh, great. no i've actually <laughs> put quite a bit of time into it because i did stream it at one point um before it just tanked my pc because it's quite demanding so uh, i kind of quit the streaming scene for that but it was fun while i was streaming it but yeah definitely put it on par with like a battlefield game in terms of its polish it's really well done okay matt um, again, about the you were saying about the loadouts. Um, do you still have the equipment to take on certain roles? So, do you still have like an ammo bag? 
do you still have like the defib which somehow heals bullets that sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you, you don't um i don't actually believe there is a I don't believe there is a medic class in the game, I don't think. Like, one that can just pull you off the ground. I don't think it works like that. Hey, there's, a, there's an idea for a medic class, isn't there? Being able to, like, suture and, like, have, having to take your time to and having a mini accurately... Game, yeah, accurately. Yeah. yeah, a little mini game, like, accurately pull a bullet out of a wound and suture it and then put... Yeah. All whilst this chaos is going yeah. off around you. Yeah, that'd be quite cool. Even um, better if it's, like, Surgeon Simulator. You just there. <laughs> <laughs> Whack, just whack, 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 whack. <laughs> My pistol's in there. I've stitched it up. <laughs> Guys, I dropped, I dropped three bullets in the lungs. I don't know which one, though. <laughs> just remove just a heart. Him, Let's him... drop another heart in there. <laughs> just have it. Oh, that you guy's got two, one. <laughs> you have two hearts. You are a super soldier. <laughs> um, the, my, the, the medic side of things, I'm not 100% sure on. I can't remember if there are but yeah you can definitely drop out bags and things like that there are certain roles anti-tank kind of bits and bobs like that because there are obviously vehicles in the game that are going to shit on your parade but you can definitely pick up the roles but there isn't like a what i meant by there's no class thing is it's not like a set role like you can only then pick these weapons it's kind of like if you want to play a medic who's got a sniper rifle go for it okay cool okay um so you've, you've already said that it's like high quality it's, I'm, I think you said it's FPS, so it's a basically Sorry, a, a yep. battle sim. Yeah, I'm sure yep. you said that. Um, <laughs> and you said it's, so what's the distinction uh, then? Because I didn't quite get the distinction between, apart from maybe the more customization of weapons, the higher customization of weapons, between a battlefield and World War Three. Why should I buy that over battlefield? Because it's not EA. Apart from apart from your prejudices <laughs> against the developer, which I no. totally sympathise no, with, no. but <laughs> um, I think I think it's mainly just it it goes to it goes out of its way to really let you. I mean, it's one of those things where there's the, the it came about around the same time as not the same time, but roughly in the same period of what um, Escape from Tarkov came out of, and that game was purely focused on loot collection and gun customization. Um, with uh, World War Three, it's it takes it a way higher level than Battlefield does. So, like we're talking about like different types of rails on your guns and stuff like that, and, and like forty five degree mounts and like just like daft, just absolutely daft levels of customization on there um, for your class. And that's what sort of drew me into it. It's just like, oh, I can make an AK and I can look unique on the battlefield. Whether it's like with a lot of these like arcade Call of Duty shooters, it's just like you're gonna frequently come up against weapons that you're like seeing that why using the meta gun kind of thing it's a bit different like it's it kind of almost removes the meta because it's that ridiculous and all these guns have these attributes right. based on what you're putting on them like obviously a heavier gun's gonna like actually be harder to kick up and stuff like that so that actually reduces like the recoil of the gun it sort of stops it dragging up so far bits of like really really intricate shit like that okay. is what you've got to be looking out for gun so simulator think, then so it's a gun simulator mixed with battlefield yeah hmm. okay matt last question last question how much of a focus is there on like team play and especially like with with battlefield with the commander system where you could like give orders and things like that Sim does, is this something similar similar thing in world war three yeah so there is a commander system basically they're all set objectives and if you manage to go and push set objectives you'll get bonus experience for doing that kind of thing and all you're doing by getting your experience really is just leveling up your character it's almost like a glory type thing it's not how many games you. it's basically a big scorecard you get on your character to say how many kills and shit you've got and how much experience what level you are and that's all that the experience serves so the, there's no progression it's not it's, really it's not like of, you unlock anything yeah it's like you, you can unlock okay. the you can unlock things like because like the gun system is like completely unlocked to you at the beginning so you can just go in and choose whatever guns you want the player model customization some of the cooler looking outfits more of the fashion side of things i think that's locked by experience but not the guns the guns are open to you as soon as you buy the game you can just pick whatever you want okay, okay. Um, right, so I was actually going to ask about the experience and how the progression works. Um, that's good enough for me. So my last question is, why is it World War Three? When is it set? And are, like, are, the, are the weapons advanced? If you know what I mean, or is it just... just... It's... 
weapons that we know and I'd say love, but do, <laughs> do we love weapons? I love my LSW. <laughs> I, I do. It's, it's all weapons that we have around today. So it's almost as if today, like, I mean, this doesn't age well, this comment, but it's almost as if today we went to World War Three, like the kinds of pistols and AKs and M4s and shit you'd have today. It's that and the same vehicles and stuff like that. The thing so is, right? No, I'm a big it's believer that age. I'm a big believer that if World War Three kicked off, not believer. This is the real. That's really the wrong term to use. He's a doomsday if, prepper. No, 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 no not I've quite. got forty thousand tins of beans. <laughs> no, that's me, Dad. That's me, Dad. That's, that's really <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I think that if World War Three kicked off, tons of new like armor, arm, um, army out. technology would come out because right. of it. And I don't, I'm not so. I don't necessarily think it's it's ready to be released. They obviously have all this in the in the army and and and. In you need active like, combat, but I reckon it'd just suddenly kick off because there'd be loads of money in it and loads of reckon, data and research would go into it. So, do you reckon that they'd start researching now, or do you reckon a lot of like unreleased stuff would also make it out very quickly? I think probably it, ahead of schedule, they would accelerate things. I, I'm not sure about well, yeah, I reckon they'd probably they'd probably release stuff that's in R and D at the moment that isn't quite ready, uh, and they just give it to the grunts. It doesn't matter. There's only, there's only twenty of them in that in that Look unit. This pistol hit yeah. fires backwards. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see if it works. You see that one that fires round corners? Oh, yeah. that corners? <laughs> Did you see that there was an attachment for that? It was a stuffed cat attachment. So you get on the floor, put it around the corner, and it just looks like a cat's come around the corner, what? and then bam, bam. You're joking me? <laughs> no, I will. I'll try and find the YouTube video after this because <laughs> what the does it? What's it, that, it, what's that cat? cat doing there? Oh, Fine, shit. don't worry about it. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. So <laughs> questions are up. Um, oh, Danny, God. what's the current I've got one, price? I've got, sorry, current... I've got one more quick question. Oh, can go you on then. Can you shoot round corners with a cat? <laughs> no. <laughs> shoot through a cat's ass round corners. <laughs> Not the cat's ass. That's ridiculous. Oh, sorry. Well, how else are they going to attach? <laughs> There's nowhere else to thread a hole. <laughs> I don't want to see your ass after all that. If that's where you're trying to thread things. <laughs> right. Uh, you're oh. going to ask about prices, I think. Current price, £24, so it's a little bit steep. Lowest recorded British pounds price, £14.40. Mm. Oh, they're high prices. They're high prices. They if we base it truly on on the, the prices there, if it was cheaper, then I would probably say yes, but because it doesn't... There's not much more to it than what I, I already own. Other, yeah, I've earned... Sure. I, I own Battlefield 3, I think was the last one I actually played. I probably got five somewhere as well. I think I got it with my graphics card or something like that. Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't. I only only because of that price. If it was maybe eight to ten quid, you'd get it. Yeah. Maybe I might give you half a point. I might think about it more. But no, I'm gonna have to say Fair no. Enough. But yeah. it does sound good though. To be fair, you, you did you did a good job then, Danny. It's just I'm doing the Rim World thing that you guys did to me last week. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally understandable. Like I had, like I got it on release when it was like hyped and yeah it, it it was just one of those things that i was just like i had a bit of spare cash laid around i wanted something brand new to play that no one else kind of even got and i was just like oh cool right but have you got a few it. people playing it with you? no no I, I think i mentioned it to some people and they were like yeah that looks that looks fun i want to give that a go and then nothing overcame of it but i kept on playing it for a little while and uh, i enjoyed it for what it was i think for me i think i spent I think I spent 30 quid on the game. I think that's what it was when it was brand new, freshly released. And um, if I'm honest, I've got 30 quid's worth of entertainment out of it anyway. So I'm not... I'm not sure I would. That's the thing. I, yeah. It, it does sound, sound like sound like something I'd, I'd enjoy for a set period and then kind of just give up on and never play again. On, yeah. I'd do exactly. the same with all shooters though, really, these days. So Matt? Mm. At 14 quid, especially if there was a few more people interested in it, at 14 quid, I'd buy it because I... I played a hell of a lot of Battlefield 4, and it just sounds like more of that, like, you know, maybe a bit updated. But, yeah, for 14 quid, yeah. Maybe not full price, but 14 yeah. quid. Is that yeah, a yeah. full half a point from you, then? That's 0. 0.4999 recurring, <laughs> no, half a point. 0. 0.4999999. <laughs> You just put right. a little circle at the top to indicate it's recurring. So what's that? I'm on 1.01625. You're on one point six four nine 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 nine. If that's nice. the type, if that's the type, <laughs> right? Okay. So next week it's Matt's turn, and that's the end of our season. That's mm. the end of the season. So that next week 
not next week, the week after next, we're going to be doing a roundup, which is probably going to be pretty boring for our listeners, but we're going to be going through our Steam list and we're going to be saying what we've added, not just Steam, but if it's a Wii game, for example, what we've added to our wish lists on our Wii U. Uh, Wii U's? <gasps> Was it 2014? <laughs> oh, I can't remember what it came out now. But anyway, yeah, so that, that should be fun for everybody. It's- it's not going to be boring, Chris. Come on, sell it up a little bit. Get people interested. It's going to be <laughs> the best experience be, of your It's going life. to be the wish list extra- extravaganza of the year. It's and going to be like... To, you'll be the first to get hands-on with the Dens Decimal System. <laughs> get to it's, love it. It's going to be like Barry White has come back from the dead and he's singing our wish lists. That's how impressive <laughs> it's going to be. I've, been I, uh, I've got high hopes for Matt's game next <laughs> week. Have you got anything in mind yet, Matt? You don't have to tell us. I, don't tell I, us. I, I do, good. Um, because because it's the last one, it, it's going to be a good one. Okay. It's not worth, I hope worth it's seeing. another Metal Wolf 3D. Oh, that was brilliant. No, but I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't say. You can't say? I can't, you can't say. say. Can't oh, and, D- and Danny, actually, you still have to come up with points for my ultimate chicken horse, because you weren't here for the first episode, for episode 71. So you still have to come up with points for, for me, for that game, if you would buy it or not, based on, you have to listen oh, back to 71. That's... That was a full bait. He's, oh, what? You what? can't make me play the game and then be like, oh, now you've got to reverse. Oh, sh- no, shit. I've played it now. You've played it, haven't you? Well, that's not fair. No, I didn't do that on purpose. That's not fair. I did tell you. <laughs> no. In fact, I sent you a message in Discord at least a week ago, and you can look back in the log to see you need to give me points for that. Okay. <laughs> Threateningly. Yeah. You need to give me break your legs or find you. before I do the Steam, <clears throat> the Lanox <throat> Steam game plan where you play all the games I've played and you buy them. Totally Sick. did not. I didn't even think about that. I did not think about that. But yeah, fuck it. Sorry, sorry. It's done now. It's done, done now. I sold it. I sold it weeks ago when just because you weren't oh, here. Right. Right. Let's move on. So, on to our flashback section. It's where we talk about games that we've played, basically. Um, Danny, get you over done with anything? Yeah. Factorio and crawl with you at LAN. Was that the first time? Oh, it was the first time you played Factorio, wasn't it? It was, yeah. What did you think of it? I I like the game. My deep end experience with it, like literally got chucked into the survey. It's just like, cool, we need to build all this stuff. And I'm like... Well, it was me and Thornor kicking off and like building lanes and yeah, factories. And... I mean, I think my experience with it initially held me back a little bit but i did start to get into the swing of things and did a few bits for the server that we were all playing on i think i would after playing factorio i think i would buy the full price game and i would also probably and i'm not an epic games hater by any chance i think i'd probably have a look at satisfactory as well because i think like a 3d version of it would actually be really cool i i well it's easier i think to to build factories on a 2d plane in factorio than it would be in Satisfactory. I haven't played Satisfactory, but I very much do want to play it. I've seen it plenty, and I saw it plenty of the LAN as well, and it's definitely up my street. I, the only reason I didn't press the button this weekend and buy it is that I wanted to I want to play it on my own to start off with. I don't want to jump into like that Factorial thing. I didn't really want to jump in and learn Factory with other people. So yeah. you, you, I'm, I'm glad you like it, because there you go, your micro experience of micromanaging games. I think what, what my... I don't have an aversion to micromanaging games. I hate micromanaging people. That okay. pisses me off. The randomness of it annoys me. Do you know what I mean? Like with with Factorio, you know where your lanes are going. You know what thing you can generally visualize what's going to back up and what's not going to work. Okay, right. so procedurally That's, generated you know, environments and people environments and, and, and and random RNG. Just like micromanaging that annoys me more than it probably should do but it does and oh, i get Factorio it is a bit more like predictable than m- normal micromanager game i get it you spent you spent um you know 150 odd hours building this this character up and then they suddenly have a heart attack and die on you yeah, yeah. it's annoying thanks rim world happened to me the other day <laughs> nice bell end then... did you find out whether you can cut your own limbs off and eat them yet I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Coming out of the important questions. And so, then the second, go on. I was just going to say, so Factorio, is that something you're definitely going to buy then? Because I will play that with you if, you, if you're up for it. I think so. Great. I think what I will do before I do is probably have a look at someone who, like on YouTube who's good at the game and can explain the the general mechanics of it a bit better than it's like, oh, you just click this, this, and this. Like, well, okay, right. And muddle my way through it. I Everything's got inputs through. and outputs. That's the basics yeah, of it. You know, you feed, it, yeah. you feed data into things or you feed... Um, items into things, into things and, and, and then things. Yeah, yeah. 
other things come out. One one item comes out of a assembler of some description, but there's loads of when think, you get into the oil and the the liquid and that kind kind of stuff that gets more complicated as well. Yeah, it was. I think um, mainly things to do with like belts and stuff and feeding belts into the right place without fucking it up. That's what I was scared of doing because people had already done belts and then things got attacked. I was like, how am I going to rebuild this? I don't know. So that, I think a bit more experience with the general like basic mechanics, and I think yeah. I'll, I'll pick it up. And if I'll you do the campaign, pick the single player uh, game up, is, do yeah. the campaign and the campaign takes you through the basics and gets you to a certain level and then you go, right, I'm now utterly addicted to this game and I want to build the most efficient, massive factory on the planet. You can even turn the enemies off. You don't need to have them on. I did that the first time I played the game through on a skirmish mode. Yeah, that sounds like a lot less of a stressful experience. I mean, just they're, they're, they're just annoying. When, by the, a certain point in the game, they're just annoying and you can get massive hordes of enemies coming to you and you can deal with them pretty easily once you've got your walls and your turrets up. You don't need to worry too much about them. It's yeah. very much the same with Satisfactory, although you, do, you don't really have, or I haven't seen any sort of hordes attacking you. There are enemies in the world, but it's more of like an individual threat rather than a threat to your base. Yeah. So if, if you're enjoying Factory, I'd definitely have a look at Satisfactory as well. Yeah. Sweet. Right, so cool. before Dens goes into his second one, let's go to Matt. What have you been playing? Anything new? I have. I've been playing something that we spoke about last weekend. I've been playing Untitled Goose Game, yep. and it is as fantastic as I thought it might be. <laughs> it is wonderful to chase a child around honking. Yeah. I'm just going to let that linger for a moment. Dedicated honk button. A dedicated honk button. There's a dedicated honk button, a dedicated button to raise your wings in a threatening <laughs> manner. I, 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 the number of times I have stood in front of people blocking their path, and they've like they've looked at me with like a little question mark above my head because I am stood there, wings spread, just honking repeatedly at them. <laughs> and it is so much fun to just be the biggest feathered dickhead you could ever imagine. So. The comedy aspect of it aside, which I know I'll enjoy, I haven't yet got it. I was going to get it after the last show, but I, again, haven't pressed the button for one reason or another. But uh, longevity. Yeah, I, I think the game is relatively short. I still haven't finished it because I've, I've only had kind of a couple of sessions and I've been trying to take my time with it just because it's it's one of those games where the, the comedy isn't really given to you. The comedy comes from you playing the game and how you interact with the world it's earned it, it's earned comedy and it makes it so much better and so much more personal and funny like i stole someone's um pipe and i was I, just running around the you know the goose had the pipe in his mouth and was just honking as this man chased after me because he ah. stole his pipe yeah <laughs> it, but <laughs> smoke ring yeah. <laughs> honk, honk 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 yep exactly it, it's just it's so much more personal because it's you being that feathered twat running around with someone's <laughs> slippers that you've stolen and throwing them into a pond. It's, yeah, get it. Please yeah, get I'm, it. I'm going to get it. I'm definitely going to get it. Even if I just play it at home, I was considering it, taking it around my mate's house. Uh, I said I'd do this Tuesday night session with like quite a few people and, and we're all just going to kind of have a laugh at it because quite a lot of the time, my mates enjoy watching me playing games. Uh, well, one, one of them in particular. Um, and he's he's he just likes sitting there watching either either if I'm particularly good at a game or particularly bad or it's funny or something. I said we've been playing that um, oh that West of Loathing game, yeah. um, which is just funny just to me. I just find it funny. It's just an arbitrary RPG stickman game. You know, you're running around. Everything is just written in such a funny, sarcastic, satirical way. And yeah, it's a good laugh. But yeah, I'm 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 gonna get it maybe this I week. I'd, I'd recommend it, especially like um, I know you've said in the past that your your wife doesn't play a lot of games or she's not maybe not the best at games, but it's it's something that like anybody can pick up and play because it's there's no threat in the game, hmm. nothing's ever going to hurt you. It's I guess it's closer to a puzzle game than anything else, but it's just such a it's got so much character to it. Yeah. Like, like anyone can just sit and play the game and just get their own enjoyment out of it, and it it, it it's it's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> I say that she's she's this week she's she's picked up Until Dawn on the PlayStation Four, which okay. is like a heavy rain type story based decision based game uh, with lots of quick time events. Um, horror. She's into horror, as I said before, and she's played that and completed it like over the weekend, and, and oh. I think she finished it yesterday actually. Um, and you know, it's like I'm quite impressed that she went out and bought a game off her own accord, and you know, actually I got into it. it. So yeah, I'm turning her into I'm turning into a, into a gamer. 
that's not afraid Good. of pressing buttons. We need more of those. <laughs> so I'm going to go next, um, just to spread things out a bit. I've got a list literally as long as the Trans-Siberian thingy railway. Yeah, well, really long railway. It's it's a big oh, list, yeah, yeah. anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to just quickly go through the ones I'm, I'm still playing. Dying Light the following. Um, nearly nearly finished it. I'm like 1%, 2% off the end of the main story, but there's loads of side things. Just enjoyable. Just want to keep playing it. Bloodborne, kicking my ass. I'm now on a spidery thing, boss, which I think everybody who's played it knows. Um, I've done quite a few. The Shadow of Yarnum, which was a boss, three guys with swords and flaming balls and stuff. Oh my fucking god, I nearly bit my own finger off trying to... I swear to god, I was so frustrated. I was just sat... My wife kept giving me suggestions and I'm just going, fucking chop! <laughs> oh, I was so angry at playing that, that one particular boss. But still loving it. I've also picked up Dark Souls 1. Uh, well, sorry, I've already got Dark Souls 1 Die More Edition on the PC, which I've had a little play of. Was that working alright? I saw you playing it at LAN. And yeah. It is it working all right? It, oh, it, it looks like I'm playing it in 640 by 480. It is in 1920, but and with anti-aliasing pushed right up. But it looks because it's so old and it's not the HD remake. It's pretty shoddy looking. It's a lot slower than Bloodborne. Yeah, it's a lot more considered, um, and it feels to me maybe I should have played that first. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure if I want to play the first Dark Souls. The, the games do ramp up in speed, so Dark Souls 1 is quite methodical. Dark Souls 2, a little faster, not too much. Then Darks, uh, then I think it was Bloodborne, which is way, way faster. And then it kind of it kind of meets in the middle with Dark Souls 3, so the, it, it's different for every game. The, the combat's a little different. But like with, I, I find with Dark Souls 1, you can get away with like heavier weapons a lot easier because things are a bit slower. Right. So, that's just something to consider. I played it up to the second campfire, and then there was this night guy sat next to the second campfire. I spoke to him, and he gave me some advice and told me what to do next, and then I hit him with my sword, and then I hit him with my sword again, and then I hit him with my sword again, and then he just chased me around the level. So I have to restart the game, basically, because I've ruined it. I've ruined the entire experience. <laughs> did you accidentally press the attack button? No, no, no. Or were you just I, seeing what was going to happen? I did it on purpose. In, in Bloodborne, there's quite a few... Um, NPCs that you can kill and you get special items from them. There's some that you can kill and they kick off and they turn into monsters and stuff. But most most of the like passive NPCs either don't die or they die and they give you something very special. So I thought that might be the case. wasn't the case at all. I was doing about two health every time I hit him and yeah, there's no point. I couldn't get away from him, so I'm just gonna have to restart it. But I've learned a bit about the game while I've been playing it and yeah. I think I did better playing the first one than I would have done if I just went into it blind after playing Bloodborne because I know the I know what to expect kind of from it but I've got two got two ready on the PS4 I think that's a HD remake I will get three if I enjoy two and then I think I'm going to go for Sekiro as well because I'm, I'm, I'm into it now Sekiro. yeah I didn't I don't know it just sounded yeah. very 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 fast in comparison but I don't know I've not played it have you played it Matt? I haven't. It's it's been sat on my to playlist for a while, but there's something about it that I, I was expecting it to be different than it is. Like I was expecting it to kind of just be, you know, weeb Dark Souls. Well, more weeb Dark Souls. <laughs> and I I don't think that's the case. I think the, the focus is a lot more on like the combat with what you have to work with rather than go find a new item and try it out. Which is what I, I like messing about with things in Dark Souls. It, I, I like using it as a little bit of a sandbox. Well, what if I do this with this, and then I can do this stupid overpowered thing? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm. Uh, I, 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 yeah. Gonna go. Gonna keep go, going with that. That series, I think. Also played. Um, I've I've moved back. At the end of the lamp party, I had a bit of spare time, and I thought, right, I'm going to get onto Witcher Three. Um, again, because I've wanted to replay it for ages, and I wanted to replay it on the hardest setting because towards the end of the game you're really overpowered, you've got all the best stuff, and it's just easy. All of the monsters are easy. Um, and it's it's a hand in my ass to me every five seconds, because you don't regenerate health when you meditate like you do in the original, uh, in the normal settings. So you basically you have to use every penny that you earn to buy food if you're not particularly good at dodging enemies, which I'm all right. I'm still in my head playing Bloodborne, so the timing's a bit off. Um, but yeah. it's as hard as as Bloodborne on the hardest settings. I would say. Uh, actually, I'll take that back. The From <laughs> Software 
guys will <laughs> the, the, the fans will probably have a go at me for saying that but it, it is difficult you have to dodge you can't just attack things um and i've also got the dlc to play which i've not touched so and i've also chosen a few different options at the beginning of the game you can set up the save or set up the game like you'd played the witcher 2 so you get like this questionnaire while you're in a particular scene and uh, the questionnaire kind of sets up the rest of the game for you certain characters are alive and certain car characters are dead and that kind of thing and this event occurred and this didn't and i chose different ones i think from last time i've already done like two missions that hadn't been done before and they also uh, alter the outcome of the game by the looks of it or at least certain parts of the game so yeah i'm getting a different experience and it's wonderful it looks still looks brilliant these days it's quite old now yeah. as well it's still a wonderful looking game um right i'm gonna let one of you guys speak i've still got loads to talk about but uh yeah might have well you in with crawl there yeah but... go on then dan danny yeah so obviously chris's names but we played a game called crawl at one on chris's machine which is like a would you call it an 8-bit top down how is it what it's a dungeon crawler it? <laughs> yeah the, t the clues in the name danny <laughs> <laughs> so basically do you want to do you want to explain what it's about danny yeah i'll go for it so you four player co-op one of you is the uh protagonist or the hero of the scenario and you are just a measly man the other three of you are what are effectively ghosts and your de your objective is to basically fuck your friend up as much as you possibly can so you're crawling through dungeons and there are objects you can possess like candlesticks and stuff like that like random i don't even know what they were were they kind of like like almost like minecart things that used to sh shoot no like so there's the like map. loads of different traps loads of different types of traps there are um there are boxes and barrels and stuff you can throw at the hero there are candlesticks that you can fire fire at them um, and there's also other candlesticks that you can turn off i think that's all you do you possess them and it turns them off so it's darker in the room if you turn them all off in the room, it's quite dark. It's hard yeah. for the hero to see. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few different types of traps, and that one's just like a spike, um, a blade that gets shot out in a particular direction. And the, yeah. and the hero's job is to avoid them all. And they can see what you're kind of doing if they're paying attention, but usually the, the scene is complicated enough that it's pretty hard to keep a track of what everybody's doing. Yeah. The other side of it is there are, in certain rooms, like um, pentagrams on the floor, and... All the ghosts go to a, a pentagram and that will then spawn what they can sort of incarnate as so they then get to be like a spider um like a zombie dude or um it depends on it? who you choose at the beginning there's yeah. loads of them there's like this little penis looking thing which is and like a, a mushroom <laughs> yeah and all kinds of weird <laughs> shit but you upgrade those as you go through the game so as you're here as you're fucking up your hero you're also getting what's called wrath and you can spend that on upgrades and get bigger and bigger monsters that you can then summon and i think the the point of well there's bosses we didn't get past the first one because <laughs> well i found out actually i've done a bit i played it a bit last night i got my mates to play it again okay. um and they actually i said look persevere with it shut your engine stop yeah. saying i don't know what's going on there's too much on the screen etc and i told them to shut shut up and just get on with it and they did and we got to the end boss again the boss is random. You only get one boss. It's a 30-minute game. The boss is chosen from one of three. So we had like a... Uh, we had the guy with the legs and arms sticking out. Yeah, he's around. like a statue, isn't he, that he's got... Like a golden... Is it Buddha type? Yeah, thing? something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, he's got a name like Ikiria or something like that. But Aztec is what it is, yeah. Te Tethi, Ikiria, or something like that. Um, and then there's another one which is like a three-headed dragon, which can move around. I don't know if one of the persons controls them because I never got a chance to control it. I was the hero at that chance to get at that point again. Um, and then there's another one, another one that's like a blob, uh, like a, a a big fish blob thing that I don't know what he does because I've never fought him. Um, so we only get one of them. And something happened last night. I fought the boss. You can fight the boss three times and it's shared amongst everybody. And if you don't kill the boss on the third attempt, the person who doesn't kill the boss, their profile gets wiped. <laughs> gets wow. deleted. What? So here's me, fucking built up a level 15 hero, all like, yeah, I haven't got any wrath though, have I? Because I've not been a, I've, I've hardly <laughs> been a, a ghost or anything. <laughs> got to the end, fought him, I was like, didn't know that there was a three, three try limit. limit. Got knacked and it went, um, humanity 
uh, delete or <laughs> humanity gone lost. forever. Or, yeah, lost forever or something like that. And I was like, yeah, what well, does that mean? Well. And then come out and it's like CCS had gone. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just what? So I have to start out the character again. But I don't know if the levels start every time you start the game. I can't. I haven't figured that out yet because we didn't play a second uh, second round. Um, but it's still brilliant, though, isn't it? Isn't it? I was I was impressed with it. It was such a strange dynamic to experience. It was like at points it's just like I want to fucking ruin your day and kill you because I want to be hero. And then it's sort of like, wait a minute. If I just l lean back a little bit and let you get to the boss, but just before the boss, I might like, like take you out and then like get there first or whatever there's like a little bit of like a mind game scenario with it it was just a cool dynamic like so there, there wanting to help and then backing off and then when you get into the boss it's all guns fucking blazing you're going down mate it's just the weirdest like thing to i don't experience. know what i've never completed the boss i was i was a slither of health off killing the um the three-headed dragon last night um and i want to know what happens when it fin when you finish it but the other two players had tons of wrath absolutely tons of wrath because they were mostly in they were mostly the ghosts. Um, I had tons of experience. I think I got a level 15 character. When you go into the shop, obviously you can buy weapons and you know medallions and things like that to boost your your, your character. But you can also, also buy potions, which I didn't realize how they worked the other day. The potions, plus or minus either vitality, strength, or speed. And you can continually buy potions. So you can essentially build up your character so they've got 20 strength no speed and like five vitality or something okay. uh, and you're dead slow you're not particularly strong but you're you've got loads of health that kind of thing yeah. so you can customize it and you can continually go down levels in the dungeon you don't have to go and fight the boss you have to continue go down levels in the dungeon if you want if you're the, the um, hero and okay. you can keep building your character and keep building it so it's a choice based thing the more you play it the more you'll want to play it Right. So it, there's even it's even deeper than we got to the point you know when we were playing it. At one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed that. It's good, and apparently there is um, a, an endorsed mod, uh, an endorsed um, third party uh, streaming platform that the developer has because it's a couch play game only. You can only play it on someone's PC. You can't play it over the internet. Um, but there's a, an endorsed couch play streaming platform, and I can't remember the name of it. It's on their website. It's on the crawl crawl website. That okay. means that we could all plug in controllers on our all our PCs and have a game um, on the internet. And then that's cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's good. good. It's it's a good game, and I highly recommend it to anyone who wants a good couch play game with a bit more of a deep dy dy dynamic than you know. You, I don't know. I can't think of any others that are simple at the moment. But yeah, goose game. Goose game. That's not co-op though, is it? Yeah, but you oh can my God, honk it was. Multiple honkins. <laughs> Four, Double. four fucking swans, or geese rather, swans. I get the two mixed up. <laughs> boxing people of in with the, boxing people in wings in the air, honking at them. It's like my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, have you played anything else at LAN? I I've played a couple of other things. I played Mod Hal for a while. All right, which I haven't played since probably last LAN, and it's it's still a fun game. There's still an immense satisfaction in. You know, not just beating someone, but catching them with that well-timed swing of a maze and just hearing the crack as oh, somebody's crunch. head just... Yeah. <laughs> it, it's satisfying in a way that kind of scares me a little bit. I, I bought Mordhaus specifically for the LAN, and as you two know, I couldn't get it bloody working on the LAN servers. I could work, I could play on the internet, but I couldn't play on any of the LAN servers for some reason. It just was not responding when I typed in open IP in the console. Um, so strange. I didn't get to play any of the big games. Didn't play it that much, but I do want to play it more. Um, I was rubbish at it, absolutely rubbish. You have to hone your skills a bit, I think, at that game. There, there's definitely a learning curve to it, um, but it it rewards you for how well you play. You know, you I've, I've watched people play compet on it, and to see like I I know how I play, and I I play okay. I don't play great. I'm not anything special. Then I've watched um, one of my friends play it. He's obviously better than me at it, but then I've watched another one of my friends at it, and it's I I don't get how he gets so many kills because it, I don't know whether it's just the weapons he's using or whether it's just kind of that's how high the skill ceiling is. But it some pe you've got the capacity there to really play well at it if you put the time and effort into it, mm. which I won't do. 
and that's the thing I probably want. It's it's not deep enough for me to get that yeah. much enjoyment out of, but I do really, really want to play it at a lamp eye where everyone's screaming at each other over over the room and having a laugh. It's exactly the environment for it. When you can turn to somebody and scream at them because they've just smashed your skull in, it's great. It's If I divide Mordhau up into three categories with the skill thing, I think it's perfect for every type of player. There's the people who get into it who are like, that's fuck, like, this is hard and I'm shit, but it's funny as fuck and I want to carry on playing it. Then there's the people who are casually okay at the game and it's just like, yeah, let's just go bash some skulls in on Mordau. And then there's the high ceiling of skill where it's just like people who are spending like thousands of hours in this game really tweaking down their like movements and like parries and stuff like that. It just, I think it covers a whole broad range that everyone can get in on and have fun with. And that's what I think I like about it. It's like, if I'm having a particularly shit day, I can just be the scrub guy who finds it hilarious that that guy just got torched <laughs> by fucking firebombs on the platform and then someone dinked him in the head with an arrow. It's just funny. I do have, I mean, again, people who played it more probably just will disagree with this, but I, the only comment I've got about the game is that it doesn't feel that different to chivalry to me at the moment. It's For me, it's different enough. Like... It, I feel like the blocking and parrying is a lot better in but, Mordhau. Yeah. It's and more I, accurate. It's, it is more skill-based. You have to be um, more of a Twitch player, I think. Not Twitch, online Twitch. I mean, as in moving your mouse quickly, reaction. Twitch. Yeah, yeah reaction yeah. player to, to play it well. And I'm assuming you can parry fairly quickly between, like if there's multiple people surrounding you, can you parry three at a time and then go in for a lunge? or? Um... Generally, you won't get the chance. Right. Yeah. You can. I've done it before where I've parried two people, but if there's two people around you, there's likely a third and you just can't, and they're just going to crack you. And it's just unfortunate. You might be able to get around them once, but it's just that it does drain your stamina. So as soon as you've parried a couple times in a row, you're really running low on stamina. As soon as that stamina bar drops, your weapon just drops out your hands and you're running around with your fists. And don't get me wrong, timing on fists is a bitch and I hate it. So when I'm like par like pounding on people and they suddenly drop their weapon, it's like it's almost like Dark Souls just fucking comes and punches me in the face because the timing's then completely <laughs> off. And I'm like, fuck, I can't hit this gun and he's just beating me to death <laughs> with his fists. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I can't lose now. I'm just like annihilated you, dude. And he just punches me to death. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> I'll just quit. I did I did get quite a lot of success. I and mean, I was rubbish with um uh, with the melee weapons, but I did get quite a lot of success with the boars in this game. Yeah. Um I'm not a particularly big fan of ranged weapons in multiplayer games, unless it's a shooter. But you know what I mean in in that kind of environment. But, Mario, yeah. Because I know a lot of people get get frowned on for doing that as well. But I did. I got more kills. So screw you all. And I love camping as well. Yes, you heard. I love camping in that game. Is that because you can pick berries? No berries. <laughs> when you go but camping. His own arrows. Oh right. Okay. But um. I, it has its place. I like. It's just funny when you're catching Archer off guard, who's not really been keeping track of you. He might have got tunnel vision on an enemy, and mm. you can just he's just like, oh shit, and he might pull out a little sword or something, and you just like taste him. It's brilliant. <laughs> I, I, I got a hatchet. <laughs> yeah, throwing axes are one of my favourites as well. Like you know, when you just lead a shot just right, and it goes, and you just go clunk, and it just takes them out. <laughs> it's just. It's so much fun. I'll have to get a bit more I, in on it online, yeah, we'll, see if I can get more we'll, enjoyment out of it. We'll have to I, like organize a um, like a night or something every so often just to play more. How I'm not sure what happened there. I'm not sure. Um, I do have a point of contention still with all games like this: the fact that I can swing like an eighty pound warhammer at someone and they can effortlessly parry it with a stiletto dagger annoys me to <laughs> the end of the earth. It's like. It's like if I was driving a car at someone and they could just like use a fork to like knock me out of the way. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. Yeah, so I, uh, I think if they did that though, everyone would use eighty pound warhammers, wouldn't they? That's a problem. And it'd be a great game for it. <laughs> Make the stiletto incredibly quick to stab someone, and then, but then they get shot. Then they get pounded into a stake. <laughs> <laughs> Risk and reward. <laughs> But yeah, we'll definitely pick that up on uh, like a one ops night, gaming night, whatever. People are always on it, so don't yeah. worry. And it'll be there next land. So, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Right, so going through a few more games I played. Um, Warhammer Down of War, you've been playing that, Danny. You kind of got me yeah, back interested in it. 
did you play the mod or did you just play base game? Just play the base game because uh, I, I needed to remind myself it's been so long, so many years. Uh, and, I, and when I started playing the campaign, loads of nostalgia hit me. I was like, I remember, I remember all of this shit. I remember all the characters. I remember how how the um, librarian speaks and stuff like that. And yeah, the, the, the voice folks. actors. And I, and I also remember it brought back to me the Warhammer world, how ambiguous it is. The Space Marines aren't the goodies. That they're so. I mean, you could say they are, but they're not. It's just, yeah, they're really not. It's the, the ho it's a horrible world, isn't it? I forgot that. I for totally forgot that the, the, the little thing that the dreadnought said when I moved him. He said, "It's not, it, I, I, I can't remember exactly his wording, but he's basically, it's nice to serve again." And I was like, "Shit, yeah, they're they're resurrected space marines, aren't they? They've been brought back from the dead and." Like in a box. welded yeah. into this body and they can't leave it and it's oh my god it's horrible it's a horrible world yeah it's really like it's just not good if you really look at it closely it's not good i think the warhammer thing is blue ultramarines oh look they look cool i bet they're the good guys are in blue no they're not uh, they'll fucking tear aliens limb from limb and yeah. not bat an eyelid it's just it's, it's also a very <laughs> cool world as well when i you love think it about i love it, it. A very yeah. interesting De world. It's law that they put into it it's what annoys me about a lot of the um, Warhammer stuff. That I would play Warhammer games no end, but some of them just don't, just completely miss the mark. Some of them really hit it, and Dawn of War is probably top that hit it, I think. There's, I mean, I also enjoyed the depth of it, and you said the, the Apocalypse mod um, goes into a lot more depth, so I think I will get it and have a go. Um, I feel like I'm, I think I'm going to put it on my to play through again list, because I, I, it reminded me how good it was, and how uh, th there is a limit, to, to you know the, the progression in the base game but i've also got all of the dlc because i got that as part of a down a warhammer download yeah. hit humble bundle or summer ages ago and i've never played them so oh get... so dawn of wars like you've got like the winter assault um bloody soul storm uh dark crusade and stuff like that oh wow there's a lot to learn yeah mm. it expands it massively that's what i like about it it's like it had a lot of expansions they were all good it left on a high, and then this apocalypse mod just tacks on even more, and it just really turns it into a, like a tabletop feeling game. It feels a bit mm -hmm. odd that, um, um, when you all of the mods are separate games, they're not yeah. all. You can't play them all at once. You have to start a new game up and install a new game for it. And I'm presuming it's just expansions to the base game. They are, but they. I think the campaigns within them are held right. within the separate expansions and that's why you have to boot up the game and it's classed as a separate game on Steam. But if you go to play, well, if you go to play Soulstorm, you've got all the prior races from all your new DLCs, if you get me. Right. So that's how that works. So when have to it, look when at the, you, the order they were released and play them in that order. Yeah. Uh, Soulstorm's the last. Right. But yeah, um, on the Warhammer front, we also played quite a bit of uh, Deathwing. Yeah. We did, and we got past level one. <laughs> we got past level one. I can't believe how hard it is. It is actually ridiculously hard. But how much it like, makes me feel like a Terminator. It, it does. Like, Why? Because you kept getting terminated. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. I think the mixture of the head bobbing, the speed at which you generally walk at, and the noise, the sound design on it, really does put you in a. A good place with like i'm a terminator and the environment as well they put a lot of effort into the look and feel of the the space hulks and it fe it doesn't just i mean I've, again i've got a 4k kind of rig and it looks beautiful um at full full 4k res runs lovely as well but it's it just got that it's just got that dark aesthetic the only criticism i have and i said this to you previously is that the animation on the enemies is janky as fuck. yeah it's, like where you see them like sort of stuck to the ceiling like like coming towards you like and not even running and just all kinds of weird shit and it puts you off sometimes but it's i can overlook it but it's yeah i can shit. overlook that because it, again it's quite a simple game there's not much to it the progression element is is relatively down you know there's not much there but you all really have to work together to get anywhere and again we're going to be playing that and i you know what i feel like i feel like maybe getting my stream on and doing some streaming with this maybe some under residence arcade and yeah, uh, I've thought about picking up streaming again for little games like and nights like this and stuff. You're uh, but, more than happy to stream under the Resonance Arcade banner if you want, oh, Dense. Oh, it's, up to you. it's not just me, you know. I know, I know you think. I know. Well, you do have to change your name to Chris, though. <laughs> yeah, you do you do? I have to give <laughs> you the stream Chris. key and then manage it and monitor it and, and moderate <laughs> the chat channel. And... <laughs> yeah, it, that, 
with, with the like i think we even had one of the guys from LAN literally watching us playing it and he's like oh i'm gonna get this it looks really cool and yeah. i was just like we had, yeah, a, few, we had a few people crowded behind comment. us yeah yeah just like this is space look it's just be a badass for for the 10 minutes that you're alive um <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah like you're saying there's not much there but it's what you like to get past it all it's what you make of it it's like I think we were doing formations and all kinds of crazy shit like to get past this fucking first level it was keep nuts. the medic in the middle and you know make sure that yeah <laughs> he's uh, safe yeah bubble in i need a heal and yeah like, it's just nuts like so well, i really in. liked it because of the the variation of all the different classes i said it's quite simple but at the same time there's so much variation in how you can play it things like when we went to there's a like a, a tear that you can go through and go back to the safe area for like a minute or something um, and you can change your weapons. There was a point where I'd upgraded where I could have the Spear of Canaban. Is it Canaban? Caliban. Caliban, yeah. um, which was like a plasma weapon. Um, but it probably, it, I shouldn't have done that. That's what lost us. I should have stayed with the Flamer at that moment because I was, I was saying to you for ages, should I stick with the Flamer or should I go with the Spear? And you said, oh, no, two Spears of Caliban is better. And I think... Because we got swarmed, the flamer would have been better. And I keep thinking about this. I keep thinking that would have been a better tactic just to do that. Just little tweaks just like little that. Tweaks to like, but it's so simple. It's just like, so what? It's a flamer, and you, in a lot of games, a flamethrower is pretty. It's still an individual type of weapon. It's like you need to point it at that enemy and hold the trigger for a few seconds to kill that enemy. But it's not like that in Space Hulk. It literally is a crowd control weapon. And it, that's what I like. it engulfs the entire area. And it's, I'm, I'm glad we didn't turn on team damage. My <laughs> God, there's no chance we'd have done it. Would have just been like a melted pool of yeah. metal and flesh on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, yeah. So, um, yeah, other than that, all I've, um, all I've played, uh, well, I say all I've played. I got back into, I played Natural Selection 2 a little bit with Leon. Just oh, two, yeah. just one person on each team. It's rubbish. We were just trying to figure it out and see how it how it worked. It's a long time since I played it. I think it was one that I played originally. Really would like to play that with a big team. I feel how like how many? How much is it? Uh, I don't know. I got it in some pack years and years ago. It's uh, it was. Oh, you playing it? It looked good. It was a lot of fun. Um, from what I could understand, and it, it, I think the learning curve was one or two matches, and I think you'll get the basic gist uh, of how the how the levels work. Um, but yeah, it's worth worth a go. I think I'd like to probably get on that. And the only other game I played was uh, Everything. And it was free on the Epic Store. Oh, yeah. I remember you. Yeah. Because I, right. I got it, but didn't play it. But saw you playing it, bouncing don't, around as like a fucking bother. horde of bunnies or something. Just I was just bother. like, what is it? What, is it? What's I'm the not... aim? All right. The aim is to essentially create an encyclopedia of all of the items and enemies and not enemies, all of the items and objects and animals and things. And the designer of the game, because I read up afterwards, because sometimes I play something or I watch something and I've got no idea what's going on. So I read up afterwards and I'm like, did I actually understand that latest David Lynch film or, or what? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, quite often I do understand them, but it's still like everything's left unanswered anyway. Um, and the same is with this. It was basically what you saw. All you're doing is making yourself... You, you start off as like a random animal on right. on the earth and you can you have to start by going down from an animal to an insect or a bush and to a rock and then to like an atom and then to a subatomic particle and then once you get down to the lowest level that you possibly can which is just like this abstract kind of uh 2d not 2d 3d kind of wire frame air thing you know with loads of effects going on you can then go up and you go up, um, after you get to an animal, you can then become a big tree, and then you can become a mountain and a volcano, and then uh, the world, and a planet, and then a solar system, and then, like, a nebula, and then, I don't know. And, and you end up in exactly the same place you were at the very bottom. But there's, um, there's loads of quotes by a, a famous, like, 19th century philosopher, Alan, Alan somebody. Um, okay. And he, they keep playing while you're playing the game. And yet, there's not much to it. It's not really a game. It's not enjoyable as a game. <laughs> it's art as a game. And although I've commented on art before, and I don't really necessarily have a problem with it, it just wasn't fun enough for me to... I'm glad it was free, put it that way. I'm glad I didn't yeah. have to pay for it, because I'd be quite disappointed, I think. Um, 
as much as I like to give different types of games and different ways of looking at gaming a go, it it wasn't enough. There wasn't enough there for me to yeah. ever go back to it, and I think I'll just delete it and never bother with it again. I will. Get, I think I'll still give it a go just to experience it. And then... if, it's, if it's free. Or give it, it free. I said I'd give it about an hour. You know, give it an hour or two or whatever, and it's not... I'm not saying... It wasn't offensive. It just was... Is this fun? And it wasn't. Yeah. I came to the conclusion it wasn't fun for me particularly. But it got really great reviews as well. It got at least seventy to to ninety percent from most um, most reviewers. Whether or not they were pretension points they were giving them or not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, any anything else that we've played that we want to discuss? I, I think we've pretty much covered it. It's <laughs> all the games. <laughs> All the games oh, ever. No, when I was just... five, I played Mario. <laughs> you played golf with the uh, golf with your friends, is it? Yeah, you were playing on Leon's machine. Had... Yeah. You were just playing on like between the two of you, weren't you? Yeah, because the, yeah. there was a competition going on, and I didn't have the game. And you told me, "Don't get it unless it's in a sale." And you know what? I wouldn't have minded playing paying six quid for it or whatever it costs because it was actually quite a lot of fun, and I wouldn't have minded joining it, with the compo. It's a pop up game that comes up like when you least expect it, it's just like, mm. do you want to go golf with friends? And it's just like a lamp party. It's like, yo, do like a drinking version or whatever. It's like, it's, it's such an applicable format to put stuff on top of. It's weird. I, but I it like, always pops out. I like golf games though. I'm not a golfer, <laughs> yeah, but I like I. golf it's, computer games. They're just a little bit of fun. You know? It is, yeah. Especially when you're like spectating that last idiot that can't seem to get the <laughs> ball in the hole. And it's just like, way. You managed like, it eventually, Danny. Yeah, I did. No, I'm not actually that bad at the game. I'm too, I'm quite good. Ooh. 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 I actually was quite good. Leon got, I trounced Leon. <laughs> uh, and he's played you've it loads. This, as well. And you've got this game, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah no, again, just yeah, quite good. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Wouldn't mind paying six quid for it. I'll probably grab it. I might leave it because it'll be yeah. a land game, I think. But if it comes up on sale, I'll grab it next time. A few quid less. Definitely. Right, so we are probably well running over today. In fact, we're, we're at t 10 minutes overdue and we've got quite a lot of news to talk about in uh, Preview Hot Pants. But I'm going to do it anyway if you guys are still up for it. Still up for it? Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so first of all, System Shock 3 has a gameplay trailer. Did you manage to get a watch of it before? Came I've out. Not watched I've not watched it yet, but I am quite keen to see it. So I'm considering maybe at some point um, running trailers and running gameplay on this podcast again, um, potentially for, for the for the YouTube video. Um, but I'm not sure yet. But basically, yeah, there's a new System Shock, Shock 3 gameplay trailer. Same kind of voice of the, the mad computer. In, I can't remember the name of her uh, in, in the first two. Um it looks brilliant. Looks right up my street again. I loved one and two. Played them to death back in the day. Can't remember much about them now. I have to be entirely honest with you. It's been that long, but I'm definitely going to pick it up. The, the gameplay trailer's got me a little bit, a little bit wet. <laughs> nice. A bit wet. Are you, were you guys fans of the game? I have not played System Shock, but I've been told about it, and I've been told to pick it up, but I've just never had. It's it. it's the sort of game that I. I would have loved if I'd have known about it when I was younger. And I think by the time I kind of found out about it, maybe the boat had sailed a little for me. It's but... getting or has had a HD remake, the original. Um, oh, right. So you can't, I think it might even be out. I think it might have come out a few years ago. Uh, the second one might be in progress. But either way, it's worth it. If you don't mind going back to like the Deus Ex era, um, where it is really really bad polygon graphics, shonky yeah. textures, you know, like Doom type textures and maybe a bit better than Doom, but not that much. Um, but the gameplay and the atmosphere of the game is is really enjo enjoyable. If you, It's a horror, you know, it's like a suspenseful horror, jump shocks, um, RPG as well, which again, not many games had done back then, especially FPS games. I know we've got a lot of them now and there is a... I don't, there probably isn't a single first person RPG that isn't influenced by System Shock these days. So I'm talking about the Dishonoreds and the, you know, the later day, yeah. Deus Exes and things like that. There being, even Deus Ex, I think, came out after the original System Shock. I might be wrong there, so sorry if I am, but um, th they've all been influenced by it and it's, it's worth it. I'm going to, I don't think you need to know anything about the first two to get the third one. 
They, they wouldn't do that now. They want a new audience. They're just going to use the same name so they get the cult following to follow. Yeah. And hopefully a new audience as well. Yeah. Looks really nice, though. Graphics look really nice. I've just had a quick watch of the video while you were talking then, and it does very much look up my street. It's, um, I will align with Matt on the, yeah, I never knew about it when I was younger, so I never got around to playing it, and it's just one of those things that has passed me by. But if three comes out... It will. It's not an if. I think it's it's not like a. I think it's a triple A studio that's doing it. I don't oh, know it? if it's the original or not. I didn't look into it that much. I didn't know if it was been like um, Kickstarter back to you know when they try and do raises to make sure it's going to come out because I was just looking at something about the original being remastered. There was a. I think there was a Kickstarter that was remastered. The remaster of the original. I think that was Kickstarted, but I don't think this is. I think this is a, uh, just a fully funded it. studio game. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I might be wrong again. I don't know that much about it. I just this trailer came out and I was like, "Oh yeah, if I remember the announcing that a few years ago. Let's have a look at it." Oh my god. Oh my god, it looks <laughs> mint. It looks like, you know, what I imagined the original System Shock to look like if I don't look at the old graphics. It looks like what I what I remember <laughs> what you, it like. Yeah, but it's your not. Tinted, your tinted memories of like put HD section <laughs> yeah. on it for you, mate. And then I went I went back on the Steam cuz I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I haven't got the original. I've got it. I've got a disc, but I haven't got the original on Steam, so let's see how much it is and it's not that expensive. The HD remake is actually, I think it's around about 20 quid or something. So that was some, you know, an investment if you want to get it. Um, and I looked at it and I was like, even the HD remake is just made, it, I, my eyes would fall out of the skull. It's horrific for today's standards, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, cool. going to go for that. Next up, Red Dead Redemption 2, which we had really fond mm. things to say about last week. Has oh, now yes. been announced. Rockstar Propaganda have announced that um, it's coming to PC on November the fifth with its own launcher, like GTA Online. Are you going to bother with it? No, no, don't. In a word. I mean, that's coming from someone who didn't have access to a console to play it. No, not even if it came. <sighs> I was so excited when it came out. I was so excited for it. I, see, I don't know. Something happened. I don't know. I can't really pin it down. I played Red Dead 1 and it was just like, cool. I've played a cowboy game now. I can put that behind me. I don't really need any more of that. And I just never got interested in Red Dead Redemption 2. It just, I don't know. If people were people were really looking forward to, to that John Marston fix, that kind of cool protagonist, ambiguous not good but you know like anti-hero type guy and they got it to an extent but as matt said it really thinks too much of itself and it's it's basically stroking its own ego all the way through the game and it's just it's a bit too much for me yeah. um yeah anyway, well, moving on we're not going to get it don't bother with it guys anyone listening it's not it's not worth it if you want a good evening go watch blazing saddles that's a great film <laughs> yeah. and you'll have a better time than you will with red dead yeah and the playstation the PlayStation 5 has officially been announced. Oh, uh, yeah. Officially been named as the PlayStation 5. Like it was going to be anything else. Well, uh, Wired Magazine, who seemed to get all of the PlayStation exclusive stuff, uh, announced it a couple of days ago. Uh, yesterday, in fact. And uh, PlayStation themselves pushed out a blog post. So they didn't do any kind of exclusive announcement with Wired. They just pushed out a blog post and then Wired went into a bit more detail about the controller. Um... So the control pad's going to be a haptic feedback, which to me just sounds like a rumble that's got maybe a little bit more, right, your right hand's rumbling instead of your, and your left hand's rumbling, you know, maybe a little bit more. Everyone's going on about it, like it's the fucking best thing since sliced bread, but I bet it's, it's just DualShock 5, you know, with, with a, <laughs> an extra six buttons or something, or a, the, they'll have dumped the useless haptic uh, touchpad thing. Touchpad, yeah. I mean, it still gets used in most games, but only as additional buttons most of the time. I think it was, there's only one game that I played, which was the game I got with my PS4, which was Heavenly Sword. Was that a PS4? Heavenly Sword? Sounds familiar. Because you could, you could control the, yeah, it was, it was, because I remember you could control the, um, uh, the bow or the crossbow or something in that game with the, tr with the touchpad. And that's the only time that touchpad's been useful, apart from maybe on maps. I think Red Dead Redemption 2 had a... You could move the map marker around with it. It's like, yeah. Other than that, it's been largely useless. It's very underutilised. I, I could 
I think they can do better with it. I, I haven't seen what the new controller looks like, but I mean, to, to be honest, for me, I only bought a PS4 like a year ago, not even that. So for me, it'll be a wait and see anyway. I'm not uh, particularly an early adopter. I'll get I'll get a console when there's an exclusive on it that I really want that I can't get on PC. Basically, um, I think GTA might have been the PS4. That's why I got yeah. a PS4. I think. Yeah, because it dropped with that gen of consoles again. Because mm-hmm. they released it for. Th- Did they release it for 360? And no, it PS3. wasn't. I got it on PS3. I got it on PS3, and then they I got it on PS4, for... and then I got it on PC. Because PC got like delayed by a year, didn't it? So yeah, yeah. and he only nearly two years. Was it nineteen months, something like that? It got delayed between the yeah. original release, something like PC that. Version. So we have uh, other hardware things. So the, the the controller has adaptive triggers. That sounds. And I, I thought cool. I thought the DS4 had adaptive triggers, and that, all that means is that if you press it slightly, you like you might draw a ball slowly or something, you know. It's I, yeah. So the devs can program the resistance in to the controllers. So if you're drawing a bow, it might have like a tighter pull than something else. But... Okay. That. Ah oh, right. That, okay. That's... A little more interesting. I thought, yeah, like Christmas so. Soon. Yeah, you could. So technically, they could do it really fucking well, and you could have it like uh, going back to first person shooters. Everyone's kind of over, but every gun in the game could have a slightly different trigger pull. Like that would be interesting in itself. Do you know what I mean? That kind of level of depth to it, but like they'll do that anyway. It so, would, but wouldn't that become a little jarring after a while? Like it, it, it's it's like the same argument for Red Dead again. Like you know, it yeah, it's technically impressive, but would like would you not start to get finger strain after like an hour of shooting people with a very stiff trigger? I think it, I don't I don't think it like no I don't think it adjusts the stiffness of the trigger. I think it changes at the point like. I think it's like an in between of like it doesn't you don't have to still pull it all the way down to actuate whatever it is. I think it just changes the actuation of it, if you get me, I think. So okay. it's like oh, I don't know. It's I, know, I don't to... understand. I don't understand. So you're pulling it like a trigger on a controller. Yeah. And then you, so like that might be like a hair trigger on a gun or something. And then like you can like really go down to pull like a trigger on an LMG or something, just hypothetically speaking here. I think that's what they might be going for with the adaptive triggers. And the dev's been able to program in how that sort of affects the how it's with the controller of whatever you're using in game. But well, we'll see. This is me uh, coming to it. Yeah. Fresh. I'm not read too much into it. <clears throat> it doesn't sound like something we need. Um... That's it. Like if I was going to go for console. Like, I skipped out the 360 and PS4 gen, just didn't bother. I was going to pick up a PS4, but didn't. I, I was got both of them for that gen, so I'm well versed um, in that. But the if I was to pick up a PS5, I'd want it to really strive to do 4K natively properly. It's and... supposed to do 8K. Of course it will, yeah. Yeah. Because, we, again, we need that, don't we? We're desperate yeah. for 8K. They're like, you know, half the population doesn't have a 4K TV. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah, 4K isn't quite... Aff- I mean, it is TV-wise affordable now, but the yeah. 4K PC monitors still aren't quite affordable yet. They're still no. not, not not a decent size anyway. Um, You know, you want at least 30... Probably about 30-inch to to make it usable at a PC. Um, so they've also, they're also coming shipped with SSDs, which is going to improve load times considerably, which we, as PC players and PC owners, know that this should have been shipped last gen with SSDs, really. Um, I think would have tacked on a lot of costs, though, because the, yeah, the, the, the 500 yeah. gig SSDs is what you kind of expect from a console, isn't it, to be able to download all the digital copies and stuff would have re- rather quickly filled up, should I say. And probably not been very... Um, uh, very reliable either at the back then. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. Okay. So I'll take that back. Probably weren't quite ready for SSDs on commercial, um, you know, early adopters and that. I'm lucky that none of my early adopted SSDs failed on me, apart from one which I dropped. <laughs> but yeah, that failed on you. You it, didn't fail on it. It was actually a, an OCZ Let me down, boy. second that, um, don't tell anybody, apart from everybody listening, all, all three people. <laughs> Um, that um, one an o- a previous OCZ salesperson kind of nabbed when they left the OCZ office, and I ended up right. getting a copy of it. Could it even have been from somewhere, someone that we know? I'm not sure. I feel like it was, but you know, let's. Uh, yeah. Dish, dish, dish. I, I genuinely can't remember who it was though, so I can't get them into trouble. But I know it was somebody who just <laughs> went, "Here you go. We've got a spare 500 gig hard drive here," and I was like, "Put it in." 
dropped it about a week later and broke it anyway. Um, <laughs> it's got USB-C, which we've got at the moment on PS4 right. pads, um, and it's got a better battery, which mm, I haven't hit any problems with the battery that much. I suppose it's a bit annoying uh, after a day of play. If I play a PS4 game for an entire day from 9 o'clock in the morning till 10 at night, I need to plug it in at some point during that session. So, I mean, should we be advocating longer gameplay? But do I care that yes. much? <laughs> yes. I mean, for me, that's all I do. When I'm not breathing, I'm playing games. I or can confirm this. Every time I looked at him over the weekend at LAN, he was sat playing something. Some didn't, even, game. didn't even talk to us. I don't think he even knew we were there. I absolutely love games. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just my thing. It's my thing. Um, and a uh, better speaker, which we again, we all need. We need in the um, in the control pad, the PS5 control pad. Also going to natively support ray tracing on the AMD. I think it's coming with an AMD card. That's interesting. Interesting that they're adopting it. Not necessarily interesting for the quality reasons. I don't know. Oh, sorry. I was going to say interesting because AMD haven't dropped any PC hardware with ray tracing in the name. Um, they, they have announced it, but it isn't. But they've not dropped it, yeah. Yeah. But it's, we're still, uh, apparently it's holiday 2020 when the PS5 is coming out. And obviously PlayStation are going to get hold of um, early, you know, early revisions anyway. I think it, I think I said AMD, that the, the architecture, the CPU is definitely AMD. I can't remember. And, it, you know, it's all custom anyway. They don't just give them a, yeah, the like latest a Ryzen chip or something. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would. Cheap PCs for all. Um, no. Um, but yeah. The ray tracing, do we need it still? Even if it is pushed to mass, mass market? Does, as I said it? to you, I, I don't, I actually, the more I've been playing games in 4K recently on this rig, the more I don't, the less I regret getting the 2080 tie. Yeah. But that's just because I'm still just playing at 4K normal games. If I'm playing at 4K with ray tracing, it drops to 20 FPS most of those mm -hmm. games, apart from Battlefield 5, which is really well, or Battlefront 2, actually. One of them. Uh, what if, whichever uh, one I've got, yeah. it's got ray tracing in it, and I played it at full settings, and it was really well optimized, and it ran beautifully at 60 FPS in 4K with ray tracing turned on. Looked gorgeous, but looks no more gorgeous than any other game without ray tracing on. Rasterized, yeah, that's the thing. I, I didn't. I mean, yes, if you look at it and you've, you know, the the meme, the RTX on and RTX off shit, right? <laughs> yes, you can see it if you look at it. But when you're playing a game, I'm immersed enough. I know it's not real. I'm not gonna get. Yeah. You know, if what? maybe ray tracing will make a big difference in VR, possibly. That's what I was about to just say. Yeah, that yeah. I can see on a 2D. Like some games still. Do you know what I mean? I just drop dead gorgeous. You just look at me like, wow, this is still like this. Jesus. I've said I've just been playing The Witcher 3 again. And that got it's gorgeous. Even now. I mean the hair the hair works and Nvidia hair works stuff. TM. It's I mean it that I had to turn that off in my 980 because it just would not deal with it. And I've turned it on now. It doesn't look any better than other yeah. games with hair now, you know, but it was a thing back then. It, it came out with it and everyone was raving about it. The thing is though, like with with games recently, I've just been noticing like I can dot between like games released within a nine year period, and yeah, they might have patched it and improved it, but for the most part, there are some games from like two thousand and fourteen and thirteen that just look like wow, holy shit, that looks like proper nice stuff that's released like today, and it's just like oh cool, yeah, that looks quite nice, but it's just I don't know if it's just the numbers impressing me here, like World of Tanks twenty ten still looks amazing for what it is and it's just like the water effects and all that stuff it's just absolutely unbelievable and it's just like have we reached that point where it's starting to get to the point where you can't it's, it's very small incremental improvements where it's not really worth batting an eyelid that just enjoy the stuff i think the resolutions everyone, are the big thing resolutions now resolutions are the big mm. thing yeah it's still i mean my rig i said it does does run most games in 60 fps at 4k but just just about I'm dropping to sometimes if there's lots of stuff going on. I sometimes drop to around about 45, 50 FPS. Um, I couldn't run it at 144 hertz monitor. Yeah, I could not run it uh, run 4K. So that's the next step for me. It's like, but then by then is 8K going to be a big thing? Is uh, do I care? Do, do I really want an 8K monitor? I, 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 just, I mean, 4K is small enough. My icons are small enough. You know, I have to upscale things if I really want to. If I'm yes, working anything. with small text. 
I zoom in a lot on things, but is that because I'm getting old? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not genuinely 4K. Like, I'm I'm glad Windows does it properly now. Yeah. But if like when we first got Windows 10, it was bad for it. It just would scale everything to tiny, and mm-hmm. if 8K is going to be even more ridiculous. And I can see it. It has to go somewhere, doesn't it? It has to progress somewhere. But it's just kind of like at this point now. I think past 4K, once you've experienced it, I think you could like take it or leave it. I think I still think 1080p looks really bloody good in most scenarios. I, I run if I run a game in 1080p, it doesn't look great on a 4K monitor. Oh no, it looks trash. But on a 1080p monitor native, but I run everything at like 200 FPS at 4K. It's ridiculous how, how fast games are. With full settings, everything whacks right up. Um, but it just looks like shite on a 4K monitor. It really does. Yeah. Um, are we still hitting Moore's Law with um, hardware releases? We have been, but there... we might miss it this time. 2018, DC2 IPU. Tegra Xavier SLCs. I'm just looking at Wikipedia's. So we're at 500... No, 50 billion transistors. I have, this has been very interesting. So, as we all know that we increase transistor count, we also try to fabricate at lower nanometer processors. Have you heard of the quantum tunneling effect? Mm -hmm. Heard of it, don't know much about it. So, basically, it's the point at which an electron can just jump a transistor gate. So you have no control over what a CPU does. And that's interesting because we're approaching that. Five right. nanometers is where it's said to quantum tunnel. This is with silicon, so, yeah? This is with silicon. So we're having to completely redesign how CPUs are working. I think carbon nanotubes are the way that people are looking. But I don't think anything's set in stone. But we are with silicon reaching pretty much the limit, I think. It was a few years ago they were talking about, um, quite a few years ago now, they were talking about organic processors. Oh, God, I remember that, yeah. I don't um, has that ever become a it. thing? I mean, I don't follow these things. I, I don't remember anything about that. <laughs> We're talking like a piece of chicken with like a <laughs> CPU stuck in the With top. a USB part for an ass. <laughs> 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 Liquid cooling a fucking... Um, Just pipes stuck in a chicken. Like sirloin one. steak. Kill me. <laughs> no, I don't think anything did come on that. I think we are still looking at... There was something yeah. about cube processors as well. I can't remember the name of it, but Cubic, the place. quantum, quantum processors. Quantum, pro- oh, maybe that's quantum processors, yeah. There was, some, there was something to do with um, one of the consoles. I think the PlayStation was looking at using them on the PlayStation 3 or 4 generation, um, but they didn't end up going with that in the end. I love how like yeah, all these companies make these grand noise claims. It's just like, yeah, we're going to be looking at quantum processors, and then it's just like, an, oh, we just bought an AMD CPU from AMD and it did the job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I just just jammed in there with an hammer. <laughs> Turns out just... it was an order of magnitude cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out we didn't need to sell, sell our firstborn to, <laughs> to fund it. <laughs> the UK has come across the one-child policy, not by force, but by choice. Everybody wants a PlayStation 5. <laughs> Right, so moving on, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, what you've got to talk about, Danny. Oh yeah, middle middle Phoenix Earth Shadow of Gears of War Five. <laughs> it's like your <laughs> new story. <laughs> you didn't you provide a link, mate. No, no link. I didn't put that in there. That's why. <laughs> it's either one of you two. I think it's Matt with the way he laughed. <laughs> Wasn't me. For once, M- most of my stuff's much more offensive than that. But I uh, write about Danny. No, I, I, sure. I, I was just cramming keywords into there to see what. <laughs> I, I was kind of hoping you'd run with it and try and spin it out into a, some sort of story we could all enjoy, but never mind. <laughs> no, not quite. But then I think, yeah, I, I'm not quite as witty as you. Might you might have been able to pull that one off? I, I don't. I don't think it's wit. I think it's blind luck. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we do have one more piece of news though, and that is uh, Matt's. We Matt's do. I think I was. I was going to talk a little bit about Destiny Two. Um, for those of you who don't know, they've recently made the jump from Blizzard to Steam. Um, and I just, I was going to kind of, I, I've been playing that quite a bit over the weekend, which is why I didn't touch on it earlier because I was saving it for this bit. Um, yeah, they've made the jump from Activision and Blizzard to Steam. So now they are out on their own, doing their own thing with the game. And I've played quite a bit over the weekend and it's kind of, I was hoping I might have more of an opinion of it on how much it's changed um, versus how it used to be. Because, as we all know, Activision, money, 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 yada, yada, yada. 
but I I don't feel like I've played enough to really say whether it is or not. So what I might do is I might save this for next week once I've had a chance to play a bit more yeah. and I can be a bit more honest with it. So who who is Dast- who who does Destiny Two then? What's the developer? It's Bungie. Right. I th- I, I thought it was Bungie. I wasn't sure. Um. So you genuinely think that Bungie now they're free of Activision are not chasing the dollar? You think that they're just going to give things away for free and not try and make money out of it? No, not at all. I think, I mean, the, they're still selling expansions and they've still got a um, a cosmetic store in there, which, fine, I, I don't mind paying for an expansion as I've proven time and time again with this fucking franchise. But <laughs> I, it's more to do with the certain things that didn't need to be done. Like it was over monetized for a game. That you, I, I spent 80 quid um, to buy the special edition because I was that excited for it when it came out. And it... To then have so many microtransactions and so many things that were time gated, and just again the game getting in the way of itself because they want you to play the way they want they think that you should play. They want everything to be like, okay, well you've done this now for today. Come back, but make sure you come back tomorrow. What if I want to just it, sit down and play the game? Yeah, did it feel a bit like a free to play like kind of experience? very much so? Yeah, and I, even I, if you paid for it, so even if you. Did you have to? Yeah. Could you, could you pay past that? Could you? Was there a paywall? No. Well, you, you could. It, it everything in the game was oversimplified, and it felt very much like playing a free to play game, just because everything was simple. But then there was no depth to it. Right. You know, th- there was options there, like oh, you can spend your money if you want. You know, look at this cool gun ornament you could get. Well, I just want to play the game. I want to play the game. I've heard so many people talk about for so many years, so fondly from a developer that I really love the games of, and you just you won't let me just play the game and enjoy it. Hang on, weren't Bungie bought by Microsoft? No, the Halo franchise was bought by Microsoft from Bungie. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. Sorry, idiot. I don't. I don't really. Fo- I mean, I played the first few Halos, uh, first three, I think, and then kind of dropped off the Bungie radar. So wasn't sure that. So quick. Go on. I was just going to ask Matt. So I got the game free with a graphics card purchase a couple of years ago. Yep. So I've got it in the Blizzard Battle.net launcher. Mm-hmm. And I've heard talk of make sure you transfer all your characters and your saves and all that stuff over to Steam. I'm assuming I don't have to pay for it again. No, no, you get the... Um, so if you're to play now, and uh, you have the option of buying the new content. So there's an expansion that comes with it called Shadowkeep, which is based on the moon. And it has... Um, on the actual moon. It's based on, on the actual moon. It's, it's based on the actual moon, yeah. Apart from the moon now has loads of weird insectoid kind of creatures on it. But right. basically exactly the same as the moon we have now. So a like... Little, a like few the, more insects. Like the and typing it, of the dead was exactly like... Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly like House of the House Dead. Of the dead. <laughs> Chris, exactly. I, never use, I never use hyperbole except where it's warranted. You never use hyperbole unless un- unless it's absolutely brilliant. Exactly. Right. So a further question, Matt, because I want to pick Destiny back up because it looked fun, but it was too big to download at LAN. I only have the base game. How many expansions are there for me to then pick up on and go get if I just got the base game? Are there quite a few? Is it going to cost me a shitload of money to get to the point where I can do raids and things with people? No, no. The, the first two years of content, I believe, are included for free now. So you, you get boosted up to level 750. Well, the item level 750. Right. And then, um, yeah, all the content's just there for you from the last two. I think there's select things that aren't included. Right. Um, and I can't like remember. Gun. You don't get a gun. Yeah, yeah you, you can only, around with a stick. only melee. You only <laughs> melee. <laughs> there's no <laughs> enemies. Fine. You have to pay for the enemies. And then exactly. the, sh- the Shadow Keep, is that an extra on Steam now? Yeah. That you get? So that- right, okay. So you can either buy uh, Shadow Keep or you can buy it bundled with a season pass, and then there's going to be like four uh, four mini kind of events with little content drops throughout the year, which okay. I think I think it's another twenty pounds. But all right. So you're not going to like this, Matt. You looked bored out of your tits playing it at the weekend. All of you, everybody that I saw, what, there was three people sat next to me. Matt, uh, nin- keep calling him Ninja Priest, Priest, Priest. and and Leon. All three of you were playing Destiny. Were you playing together? Yeah, we played together for a while. You weren't talking to each other. Most of you were sat there 
staring at a uh, waiting to load screen or you were sat in a lobby or every time I looked over you might have possibly been fighting a, an enemy with a health bar that was going down gradually and and that was it just lo- it looks looks really nice but it looks boring that I, that again just my observation I like FPS games but I don't know it's nothing about it that makes me go I want to play that game I really want to play it why would I buy it? Why would I get into it? it Sorry, not buy it. Does it? It doesn't have any incentive to talk, does it? Like co-op or anything on it, Destiny, does it? It does when you get to raiding because that's when you start getting into like interesting boss mechanics and having to like organize, like right, you know, saying you you take care of the ads, I'll I'll do the heavy weapons, then you swap out and things like that. That's when communication comes into it. But just for running things like strikes or the nightfall, it's. You don't really need to kind of talk through it. It's essentially just a run and gun game then with your friends. Okay. Which which I'm I'm fine with. You can you can play it how you want, really. Because that's play- what I'd want out of the game is that raid communication working as a team properly. Like I can actually have a back and forth like I used to do on Halo or whatever. Yeah. So you're playing you're playing the same strikes as I think you said they're called uh, over and over and over again to gain experience and get drops. Essentially, yeah. So it's like it's a bit like World of Warcraft in that you're. You go in and you, you yeah. farm an area, you'll grind until you get to the next level, or, and then you'll move into another area that supports the level that you're at. And it's yeah. the same kind of thing with strikes. You do a strike that's at level 15 or whatever, and then you'll move on to one that's at 16 or one that's at 20 or whatever. Kind of. I I might be wrong with this, but I believe the strikes you can do at whatever level you want. Um, I know I'd, I'd, I'm not quite sure how it works anymore, actually, because I think we have changed things around but you do have access to strikes you have access to story missions which tend to be a bit longer and have kind of a bit more a bit more you know dialogue going on and things like that a bit more exposition but um yeah the main the main point of it is just go shoot things look for items that are slightly better than the ones you've got it's a looter shooter you know right yeah yeah so i said just my observation you all look bored out your skulls yeah yeah. <laughs> I hate games. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I might I might get it again. Because I, I, I played through the story and then dropped it. Kind of it's, free, it's free to play. So I, I, like I said to a couple of people this weekend, it's free to play. So just give it a go and see if you like it. it it's free for, to play. What do you mean? Like completely? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to buy the expansion to play it. It's just free to play. You just download it and you can play all the first two years of content for, for the free. The base game is free too. Yeah. yeah, everything yeah, is free. Right. It's free to play. You said it's I, free to play. That's that's free to play. No, I thought you meant like doing a free weekend or something of that, no. that effect. No, okay. it went free to play. You said this a few weeks ago. It's free to play, Danny. It's yeah, it's Fair free enough. to play, Danny. Danny, it is free to play. So why are they charging for expansions now? For fuck's sake, Jesus! Because Christ. that's that's how they got to make that dollar dollar. Terrible practices. Terrible. It's, I'd rather that than to try and sell me <laughs> some. Hello Kitty skin for a gun that I never want. No, oh, you'd want a Hello Kitty skin for a gun. Don't fucking lie. I would. Because you're. A... No, but okay. that's why I don't want them to sell me it because I don't want to be tempted. <laughs> <laughs> nah, cool. All right, I'll be there. <laughs> All right, so I think we've exhausted our news and our games that we've talked about. We've ran over by about forty minutes. So apologies oh. to to people Sorry. whose time is very important. Sorry, everybody. But not really. We enjoyed it anyway. I, f- I felt. Felt like yeah. we had a lot of content today. We so did. Skip we did. through it. We did. Need more lands, more frequent. We do. <laughs> March, I think the next one. Oh God, yeah. don't please no. It's too long. Too long. We'll just, we'll follows, follows, we'll just follows, do our own. We'll just do our own. Bless them. <laughs> we'll just do our own lands. We'll just make them up. So With blackjack and hookers. That is the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you very much for everybody who's listened to us whiff, waffle on and listened to us yet again make excuses for Danny not playing any computer games. Here it comes. Even Ooh. when he goes to a LAN party where there is 72 hours of playing games. That is the intention of playing games at a LAN party, and Danny still managed to play a I minus played. amount, a negative amount of computer games. Hey, listen, I took pictures at LAN too, so I did a lot of shit at LAN. I got you a lot of pictures. Stuff done. It's not a picture taking party. Look, Storm yeah, wasn't there for the is. other two days, and he asked me to take images, so I did. And I also got the podcast pushed out. I did a lot. I, I did a I, lot. I got it edited and uploaded, but you don't see me hear me going on about it, do you? I, no. I shaved. I, I shaved down to a mustache and looked like a child oh, predator. 
He looks worse now, mate. And by we next week, we will have. We will have. We'll post. We'll post those on I'd, Twitter for your enjoyment. I'll send you some beard. I'll trim some off and <laughs> send it. To you. I, I, when I pulled it out of the sink after I'd finished shaving, I thought, should I keep this and just fashion some sort of <laughs> pulled it out, out the of sink? It? Like that. <laughs> she got like I've been doing the washing in the sink. It's like, oh, my beard's dry. <laughs> So you can like and subscribe our show. Please do that on, on Resonance Arcade, uh, on, on our YouTube, and on our other things. Please, please, please like, subscribe, as everyone keeps telling me to keep doing that. Yep, and you can watch all of our shows on po 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 pe 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 I'm kidding, Matt, why did you do that? On <laughs> <laughs> Because if you were a professional, you would have talked around it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> poo 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 pee 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 dot com doesn't even say that um i don't actually remember what that says um youtube.com oh, YouTube. YouTube. sorry what all of our shows dot com what control z control z yeah just tell you what though i tried that and it did my last did thing not yours so i was like <laughs> fuck so yeah you can if you can put up with us <laughs> Watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. And that's where everyone starts putting on the document Red Tube, <laughs> XNXXX. You can't say that. It's a child show. Even what? though you've dropped the C bomb uh, numerous I times. I did. Yeah, you have. I'm not scared. <laughs> I think we might have to start a blood into Pornhub, though, guys, just to get that ad revenue. That's true. We can get like. Chat if we get on like chat roulette, uh, chat, yeah, that other one. Is um, <laughs> chat roulette is this one we don't know about? That yeah. way is that one where it's exclusively for people jerking off? Spaffroulette.com. Spaffroulette. Oh, good idea. Get let's, on get, it. let's see if the domain's don't, taken. don't can... type it into your browser, not while, <laughs> not while we're streaming. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my section done. And on to Matt, you can also follow us on poopoopp.com at <laughs> on Twitter at Resonance Arcade where we publish show announcements and news and finally you should join us in Discord come on what have you got to lose it's Discord discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming and we, uh, we do no 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 can't put that no Danny, and all that's left can't to say, say that about the indigenous all peoples that's left to say <laughs> is goodbye sorry for the goodbye the rubbish this week <laughs> I didn't even realise Matt carried on saying the stuff I was typing. I thought he'd just read it and laugh, but he didn't. But that's all from me, folks. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Danny's Goodbye. been investigated for war crimes. Ta-ta. <laughs>